We got a good bend on it. I'm hyped right now. Let's go. Let's go. Should have floated up by now. Oh, he's there, he's there, he's there. It looks like a mutton. It looks like a mutton, boys. Monday lunchtime now, it's one o'clock, and we're gonna go out for a little afternoon bite. A little afternoon bite. First off, I got the shark whisper here, so hopefully she can whisper to the sharks to stay away from the boat. We're gonna be fishing on the bottom, but also the thing is, we've had a lot of mahi in close lately. So what I wanna do is I wanna put some chum out, try to create a little, my own little bait ball, which would then in turn bring the mahi near the boat. We're not really targeting mahi, but it's kind of like if we catch mahi, we'll catch them. I won't be mad about it, but that's kind of my idea here. I wanna kind of target the bottom. It's been a while since I've really fished the bottom. I don't really fish the bottom a lot and maybe we'll get a mahi bite, but hopefully we catch some big bottom fish snapper 20 pound mutton snapper they're out there they're just really difficult to catch so you guys will see here in the video and i'll talk more about why they're difficult to catch and what we're using for bait and all that fun stuff So the plan is we'll put the chum out. This is really just kind of a backup. We're not really targeting a fish that we'd use chum for. Since everything has been so close to the beach lately, we were trying, we're trying to get a big snapper, but if we get some mahi, because they come in, because there's other fish and other activity, then we'll take it. And we're gonna use these bad boys for bottom bait. So these are the most expensive frozen bottom bait you could ever have, since they are literally $8 a piece. And now what we're gonna do is we're gonna butterfly these so that way when they're in the water, they're going to look like they're alive. You know what I mean? We just want that action. We want like these things underwater to be flipping and flopping around so they look alive. And then we're just gonna be fishing with these Talica 25s. No real reason other than just, I've already got them set up with braid. So that's what the plan is. My rig that I've got, I've got a circle hook. This is actually a demon circle hook on about 50 feet of a leader. You can see here what we got. We've got the braid with a uni knot there, not the most beautiful uni knot. And then I've got this swivel that's on a piece of leader. This is basically where I'm gonna attach my weight. And the reason that I'm doing this, the reason I'm doing this, you can see, is when I attach this, my weight's gonna be here and my bait's gonna be here. So my bait's gonna be 50 feet away from that weight and my bait can be in the current and my weight's gonna be on the bottom there. And I put these little beads so that way that the swivel is not rubbing on those knots and it just kind of goes back and forth. So you'll see here in a second how I put the weight on there. We've only got about a mile an hour drift right now, a mile an hour drift, so we don't need a lot of weight to get to the bottom. So we're just gonna connect this weight just like that. And you can see a little bit better now how that looks. So just got my swivel on there with the two beads going back and forth, the uni knot on the braid. So we got braid on the main line. We've got, this is 50 pound fluoro there. And then attached to that is another swivel. And this is where our hook is. So you can see how that's set up now. And we're going to the bottom with that baby. The one really key thing here, guys, is obviously there's a lot of leader, right? Having that much leader, there's a chance of getting tangled. Like, like that right there. It's a good chance of getting tangled. Patient and finesse it a little bit sometimes. So now I got my circle hook. Ding, ding, ding. I'm gonna take my gog. I'm gonna run this circle hook up through its bottom jaw. All right, so another reason that we use this system, guys, the big thing about this is it's a breakaway system. I've only got 20 pound leader to hold these weights on there. So if the weights do get caught on the rocks, they get caught on the bottom, you're not gonna lose your whole line, your whole setup. All you're gonna do is you're gonna break off these weights. So you're losing the weights and you're saving the rig. And that's why we do this system like this. Uh, that breakaway system. We've got 20 pound leader holding the weights onto the swivel there. And that swivel is going up and down that line there, guys. And we've got 60 pound braid with 50 pound fluorocarbon. So if anything is going to break, it's obviously gonna be this 20 pound test, this 20 pound fluorocarbon on the bottom down there. And that's why we have this set up the way it is. I got my bait already floating away from the boat. I wanna get that leader out there, no tangles, no knots. We don't want any craziness going on here, guys. So we're gonna put that out now, and then we're gonna drop this weight. I'm gonna try to drop it more to the front just to get it away from that back line. All right, so we got a bite on. Woo! 
You want to fight it? I don't know. This might be a good fish. I might need to reel this one in. Right, Let me get this first one. I'll get, we're going to get more. We got hooked up. 160 feet of water here. Feels like a good fish. I was going to pass it to Reyna, but I was like, ah, it's a good fish. There's a lot of lion out here as well. So we've got to obviously keep that pressure on. There's the weight on there as well. Remember, I'm fighting this with a 25 wide. So we're a little overkill in terms of the tackle. This is a big rod. This is a trolling rod. So there's a lot of backbone in it. So it's not really going to bend over a ton. Now I'm worried about is getting shark. That's my yeah. worry. Oh, he's there. He's there. He's there. It looks like a mutton. It looks like a mutton, boys. Hey, that's what we wanted right there. That's a keeper. Woo! All right, so you can see, guys. I think you can see here. 18 is the limit. We're sitting at 20 inches, so. There you go. We got him. Mutton for dinner! Hey! We got the Fort Lauderdale mutton right there. That's what we were looking for. First drop on the spot. I knew this was a spot. Did I not tell you it was a spot? I told you it was a spot right there. So that's going in the icebox. So there you can see, guess what? We were getting bites. I told uh, Randy there might be something on there, but as you can see, they're very smart. They eat around the hook. I swear, these guys, there's a reason that these fish get big. It's because they're smart. What you gotta do is, you wanna go like in his throat right here? Uh, and kinda like, see how that like lines up with the top? Cause they got like a bunch of bones and weird in their head, you know? So there it is. Yeah. We were out to the same exact spot we were, the same drift. You can see on my line here. We're gonna drift that same exact line and see if we can't find those snapper again. Chum out again, this is our second drift. We've got the two down rods and we're gonna see which one gets bit first. I just put mine out. Raina put hers out of the front. The battle is on. I'm pretty sure obviously I'm gonna get bit first, but you never know. Hopefully we get a double hookup. That would be cool. Let's get the double. Let's get the double. So beautiful day. It's like two o'clock. We already got one, one good size mutton in the boat. And we're gonna see if we can get some more. Tacos, mutton tacos for dinner. It is Monday, tomorrow's Tuesday. We got like an early Monday Manana Taco Tuesday. All right, guys, so we're getting a couple little bites here on the second drift. He's not hooked yet. I can just see that he's playing with it. And like I said earlier, these snapper are very smart. They're gonna come up, they're gonna play with that bait. They're gonna kind of nibble on it and bite on it. And obviously if it's not a big enough fish, they can't really inhale that entire bait. So obviously you can see when it's bending right now, that's the weight hitting the bottom. But then you'll see little, little taps, little taps there. And that'll be the fish when that weight is dragging on the bottom there. We're still, we're, all, we're not even drifting a mile an hour. So we're barely drifting in this current. And we're just kind of cruising along the bottom. Oh, I want to get tight so bad right now on video. Come on. It's the best when you're filming and all of a sudden you get tight. All right, so we just pulled up after our second bait. And like I said, we saw them biting on it and nibbling. And well, there you go. We're going to put another one down there. Check this baby out. This guy, I'm telling you, like, look at this. I mean, come on, like literally. That thing looks tasty. I might eat them for dinner. All right, so we got something messing with it. I can't tell if he's hooked or not. I think it's something small. I can kind of feel him playing with it. The nice thing about the braid is you get a, definitely get a much more direct feel, no stretch in the line on that mono. But there's definitely something on there. You can see him kind of cranking on him there. There we go. Now he's, ooh, I might have got the bottom actually. I mean, in theory, it should have broken off by now, but I don't know, it might've been like a fish on there, but I think it's the bottom. It's looking very bottomy. I think it might, it might've happened, it might've been a fish. Wow, so it must've been a master shark. And what happened is he just grabbed the snapper yeah. and then the line was just like in the perfect corner of his mouth. Got sharked. Yeah, look, you can feel it, feel on the line how it's like, Kind of like feels like sandpaper ran on it. Yeah. It's under skin. Yeah. It's a big shark. So we got sharked. That was fun for a minute. I thought there might have been a world record for on there. Uh, all right. So I'm pretty sure it was a shark on there. It was either a shark or it was a fish that went into some rocks. Got broke off finally. We're gonna do the same drift again. Might as well. Yeah, we've definitely been getting some bites. We got a lot of bites on that last drift. We just didn't get the hookup that we were looking for. So we gotta get back out there and try it again. You can see, look at him playing with it right there. Look at that. 
you guys can see that he's basically like just tap tap tapping on it so it might just be something small down there kind of messing with the bait we'll give him a second to see if he can actually kind of get a bend going here but there's definitely something down there messing with the bait all right so i felt something a little bit of weight on there i think it's a uh, small mutton it's a rockfish it's the worst kind of fish to catch all right so we're gonna get a little bit shallower and we're gonna put this ballyhoo on there just to see if that is any better i don't really have like a rhyme or reason other than maybe people or fish would like a ballyhoo more pull that spine out again same thing we did with the goggle eyes you can see it's kind of butterflied and that thing's going to be down there just wiggling away through the bottom there and then up through that hard part of the head that's exactly where you want it at right in the center there that way when this gets inhaled you know we get a fish comes up and bites it he's going to get that right in the lip there we go so we're going to just throw that out there hopefully the birds don't grab it we got some weeds in here Woo! we're hooked up again boys we're actually a lot shallower now and 100 feet so not really sure what it's gonna be we ran around a little bit we saw a couple color changes did not see any birds until we kind of came back saw a couple birds flying around not seeing any ballyhoo or anything busting so we're gonna do one more drift here the sun's getting low it's about five o'clock now we're in 200 feet of water here off of dania doing the same setup as earlier got the goggle eyes butterfly down on the bottom all right so you can see we're getting some taps on there getting some taps Come on, let's get tight, boys. We got a lot of weight on there. That's the issue. There's a lot of weight. Just doesn't get any better than this. We're living the dream, boys. About to get bit on this rod, too. Look at it. They're everywhere. We're on the fish today. We got this amazing sunset. Got some good friends on the boat. It's a beautiful day. Hype. Super hype. Thought I would share my... my. Oh, oh, oh. Oh, that's a good one. That's a good one. Come on, let's go. Are you Yeah, that's... No, that's... He's hooked. Let's go. Let's go. Real girl, get the fish in the boat. Now look at the rod. No, he's on there. No, no, no. Something's not right. Yeah, there you go. All right, now you're good. Crank, crank. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. He's on there now. Let's go. Look at this. How epic. How did this moment right now? I told you, you put good vibes out into the universe and the vibes just come to you. No, he's on there. Yeah. Let's go. Sure. I hope so. I'm gonna look like an idiot if I'm not. Either way, it looks good on video. I'll just say that we. Oh, he fell off of that. We saw a monster. 500 pound snapper. The thing is, the higher they come up with their bladder, they stop, they fighting. stop fighting at a certain point. Oh, yeah. Oh, yeah, baby. Oh, yeah. Here we go. Pull that. You gotta pull them in. It's your fish. Come on now. Nice and easy. Don't lose them. I see color. I see a fish down there. Oh, is it a mutton? It's a mutton. There we go. I told you, girl. We gotta put you on the mutton. Hey, take him off there. Oh, watch his fins. Hold him like this. You want to don't let his dorsal fin. You got him. All right, so again, getting eaten there. So we know that the mutton definitely like goggle eyes. We know what they like to eat. Now we just got to figure out how to hook them a little bit better. We got one good sized mutton. We caught two undersized mutton. We caught that rockfish. We looked for mahi. It was an epic day either way. I think we're going to go in now and go grab some food. Have dinner on the water there at 15th Street, and uh, yeah, beautiful day ending out here. Beautiful day. Just a beautiful day, people. Just living the dream. Again, y'all know what to do. Hit that like button, subscribe button, all the buttons down below. You don't want to miss out on what's to come next. I don't even know what's coming next. Every day, I just out here dropping the bait in the water, trying to catch some fish. No one knows what I'm going to catch next. I don't know. You guys don't know. We don't know. Let's go.